Hi, this lesson is about 10 common mistakes made by students. Hola, esta lección es sobre 10 errores frecuentes cometidos por los estudiantes. Hi, welcome again to Spanish for London. I am Laura and in this series of GCS Spanish How to Get Better Marks, I will show you today 10 very frequent mistakes made by students. Number one. Numbers. You know that numbers are irregular and it's very common to uh, get confused when trying to say the numbers of five, which are especially irregular. So please pause the video and try to remember how to say five, fifteen, fifty, and five hundreds. Do it now. Okay, let's see if you are right. Five, cinco, fifteen. 15, 50, 50, 500, 500. Students always commit mistakes with these four numbers. So how to remember them? Easy. C, Q, C, Q. So when you are struggling with these numbers, always remember this mnemonic rule. C, Q, C, Q. Cinco. 15, 50, 500. And by the way, remember that U after Q in Spanish is absolutely always mute. Number two, double consonants. Let's compare these two phrases which are cognates. Do you remember? You have a class, another video which is false cognates where I explain the uh, cognates, so very similar words in different languages. So an efficient immersion to improve your expression, translated as una eficiente inmersión para mejorar tu expresión. As you can see, the words are identical, but we have double F, double M, and double S, whereas in Spanish we have only one F, only one M and only one S. So how do I know when writing if I can double a consonant or not in Spanish? Well, in Spanish we can double only four consonants. The C, the R, the L and the N. So remember, Caroline, you can double only the C the R, the L, and the N. That's all. So if you're trying to write something in Spanish and you're struggling with a word and you don't remember, okay, I can double S? No, because it's not in Caroline. Do you see? You cannot. Can I double F? No, because it's not in Caroline. So write only one and so on. Number three, a very common confusion between bien and bueno. Easy peasy, pan comido. Go to our lesson about idiomatic expressions and you will see there that pan comido means literally, not literally, easy peasy. Literally is another thing, but it's the translation, it's the form to say easy peasy. Pan comido. Bien is an adverb meaning well. Bueno, or its counterpart, buena, which is the feminine form, is good. So, this is an adjective, this is an adverb. So, if I say, for example, she is a good singer, ella es una buena cantante, I put buena because I'm saying a good singer. Or he is a good singer. Él es un buen cantante. She is a good teacher. Ella es una buena profesora. This is a good restaurant. Este es un buen restaurante. So, buen, which is bueno without the O, to speak faster, or buena, the feminine counterpart, means, mean, both mean good, and they are adjectives. So use them when you are referring to a noun. Una buena cantante, un buen restaurante, una buena clase, un buen amigo, and so on. But use well, bien, when referring to a verb, when I say he or she sings well. 
or very well, muy bien, okay? When you are talking about the action and you are uh, precisely using an adverb because you are connecting with a verb. That's why we say adverb near the verb. You need bien. If not, you need the adjective bueno. Okay, number four, the days, the days of the week. It's very, very frequent to hear students saying, en lunes voy al concierto. Wrong. You have to say, el lunes voy al concierto. What happens is that uh, in English we say on Monday and you probably know that on could be translated as en. When I say that something is on the table, I say, for example, the folder is on the table. La carpeta está en la mesa o sobre la mesa. So en or sobre are the forms for on when I'm saying where is something. But when I want to translate on Monday, this is another meaning. I'm not saying that something is in a particular place. I'm talking about time. So this is never translated as en on sobre because en and sobre in Spanish are related to locations. So I want to say el lunes, literally, the Monday, never ever en lunes. So, on Monday I go to the concert. El lunes voy al concierto. Or on Mondays, or every Monday or each Monday I practice tennis. Los lunes practico tennis. Okay, number five, the verbs for meals. You know that we have the three verbs to say to have breakfast, desayunar, to have lunch, almorzar, and to have dinner, cenar. In English, we don't have specific verbs to convey these meanings. That's why we use the verb to have as an auxiliary verb. So we say, I have breakfast using three words, or I have lunch, or I have dinner. But in Spanish, first, Never translate have here. To have means tener when talking about possessions or with other meanings. And you have a specific video about the verb tener in our course. But in this context, I'm not talking about the possession. So I never say tengo here. I have breakfast is desayuno and yes, you have only one word instead of three. This is the correct way to say, I have breakfast. Desayuno, that's all. Don't put any extra word. I have lunch, almuerzo. I have dinner, ceno. If you hear a person saying something like, como el desayuno, or como el almuerzo, or como la cena, this is very, very bad Spanish because el desayuno is a meal. So what can I do with a meal to eat it, obviously? So we don't repeat unnecessary information when talking in Spanish. So never say como el desayuno, como el almuerzo, como la cena. This is very bad Spanish. Number six, the word gente, people. In English, when we use the word people, we put the verb in the plural form because we consider that we are talking about a group, so it's a plural word. But in Spanish, the word gente is considered as a whole, it's a collective noun. So, when we use this word, the verb goes in the singular form, so to say people have dinner early, we say la gente cena temprano. Remember that to have dinner is cenar. So when you want to translate to have dinner, you have to say cenar. That's all. Do not say comer la cena. Bad Spanish. Okay, la gente cena temprano. So remember, when using the word gente, 
put the verb in the singular form, not as in English, where we put it in the plural form. Number seven, articles. Articles are brief and apparently innocent words, but we have a specific lesson to teach you how and when to use the articles in Spanish in our whole course, because we use them in a different way in Spanish. For example, when I say in English, restaurants are expensive, if you translate this in Spanish as restaurantes son caros, you are saying something wrong because here the article is mandatory. So remember, when you start a sentence with a noun, you must put the article in front, except of course, if it's a proper noun, Mary, Maria. But if you say, for example, houses are very nice in this town, you cannot say casas son muy bonitas. You have to say las casas son muy bonitas. So again, the article is mandatory in Spanish at the beginning of a sentence when you have the noun, okay? Not as in English. Number eight, the confusion between muy and mucho. Well, very easy. Muy is very. So when I say this restaurant is very expensive, I put muy. So muy caro, very expensive. Do you see? Muy is very. Or I say here I always eat very well. Muy bien. But if I say usually I do not eat a lot, I say, usualmente no como mucho. Do you see the difference? Again, muy, very is used in relation with an adjective or another adverb. So, very expensive, muy caro, very cheap, muy barato, very interesting, muy interesante, very boring, muy aburrido or very well, muy bien, or very fast, muy rápido, or very slow, muy lento, so very is muy. But mucho is a lot, and you are connecting this with an action, with a verb. So I study a lot, estudio mucho. I sleep a lot, duermo mucho. I uh, eat a lot, como mucho, so mucho a lot. Okay, number nine, the agreement is absolutely easy to understand this concept. I know that you understand this easily, but when you try to speak, especially when speaking, you forget this all the time. So remember, if you have something like this, you have las, which is feminine plural, please, Take this into account to form your phrase. So if you want to say, I like white houses, me gustan las casas blancas, feminine and plural, all the time. Remember that words in a phrase are like members of the same team playing the same match all together. So if one of them is feminine and plural, all of them follow the leader, which is, by the way, the article. But look at this. I like white houses, but not black cars. Now, the leader, the article, masculine plural, okay, masculine plural, and coaches, uh, the word doesn't end with O, but is el coach, is masculine. So, masculine plural, masculine plural, masculine plural. So, please, when writing, and especially when talking, respect the agreement. And number 10, translation, okay. Of course, I will teach you how to translate in specific lessons. What you have to take into account is that when you study a new language, any language, and you want to translate, you are thinking in a different way. So a lot of times you have to do something different, not 
of course, the worst thing that you can do is to translate word by word because it doesn't work in this way most of the time. So if I want to say, for example, I listen to the music, I say in Spanish, escucho música, okay? One, two, three, four, five words, one, two, two words. This is correct. And some students, ask me, where is to here? It's not here. Where is the here? It's not here. And another question is, what happens if I put escucho la música? It's not correct. Because when we say in Spanish escucho la música, I'm talking about a particular music. So for example, okay, my neighbor has a party. I listen to the, eh, eh, escucho la música, in this context says, I listen to the music which eh, they are playing in the house. So, escucho la música. But when we are talking about the general concept, not a particular music, we never say, escucho la música. The correct way is, escucho Musica. So this is the only correct way to translate. I listen to the music. And what if I say yo escucho música? Well, it's not incorrect, but 90% of the times we don't put the pronoun because it's not mandatory. So we tend to drop it because it's something like a redundancy because I have the ending of the verb indicating that I'm talking about me. So you have to know how to translate. Okay, now you know something about common mistakes. Of course, there are others, and I will teach you more and more in our whole course. Okay, remember that we are launching our pilot course about verbal tenses, where I will teach you tense by tense in depth, how to use them properly, really properly, and how to use one tense, two tenses, three tenses. This is a nightmare for you because in GCSE they are incorrectly uh, explained and um, sometimes in a very, very confusing manner. Okay, if this was useful for you, spread the word and I see you in the next lesson. Nos vemos en la próxima clase. Adiós.